I'm so excited to welcome our next guest. Uh, we had him on last segment, but if you're just joining us for hour two of the podcast or on Game Plus TV, it's Mr. Furious, David Benefield, a CFL great, NFL alum. And he drove over an hour to be here, flew three hours. Yes. How you doing, Dave? Buddy, it's so good. It's when, so good to be here. Yeah, when'd you get in? Got in late last night. It's funny, I'm running through the airport. And I see some of my UBC kids I coach from back in the day. I'm like, they're like, oh. And it's so funny when you haven't seen kids grow up. And I call them kids. They're college kids. And they've all, like, grown up and everything. And I'm like, what are you doing? And they're down here to hang out with Chase Claypool. Yeah. So, so that, was, that, was, that was interesting. It was, like, great conversation with them. And then uh, we get to LAX. And who should I see? Like, my hero, Ronnie Lott. Come on, the 11th best NFL of all time. How about that? Ronnie Lott. And his nine fingers. Ronnie is sick. stud. He's there and he's in the airport, you know, looks great. Uh, and it was just like, and it, it's funny, we're, we're across the way from each other. I'm in a ball cap, sweats, jeans. He's suited, great looking guy. Just he is. Completely dialed in. And I'm like, and he looks over at me and I look at him, I go, Ronnie. <laughs> just like, of course like, you did. Like, and it's weird. You're talking to a legend, an icon, and and he looks over at me, and and he's like, ah. and then we come, and I come over, and so we start talking and everything. And were you in San Fran at the same yeah, time? Yeah. yeah. So so he we met there, and then we met a couple. Then we met a couple other times. We were in Palo Alto, uh, downtown, hanging out, and I just literally bumped into each other on the street and start talking again, and and then at an event. You know, got to got to talk to him again when I was with uh, Brett Hedekin and Chrissy. You know, so that was kind of it was it was pretty cool. It was uh, and that he remembered me. It was he something would. else. Ronnie's into car dealerships now, right? In San Francisco, and it, a lot of things. He's but. he's into a lot of so yeah. He's he's always been sort of the he has been. If you want to pattern your life after football, he would be a guy. He would be the guy. Absolutely. You know, and just so, a first class guy. Uh, so this is your hometown. This is. This is. Quite a town. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I still have residency up there in Pasadena in the San Gabriel, you know, San Gabriel Mountains and uh, Pasadena. And just, I was, it's funny, I was going down to get the newspaper this morning about seven. I'm in t shirt and shorts. And I'm just looking at the, you know, it's a beautiful sun. I mean, the sun's coming up and it's just like, I'm like, man. <laughs> I know football you took you away. You forget everybody about how forgets. Pretty it is. Yeah, I, you know, uh, absolutely. So. We had a viewer ask here earlier about cold weather Super Bowls. He goes, "I, I think they should have cold weather Super Bowls." I'm like, "Then you've never been to a hot weather Super Bowl." There's a reason why they. I don't think they're going back up north. Yeah, I don't think they will. I think it, it'll be, it'll be like the odd every blue moon they'll throw a cold weather in and just just to get back to what it used to be like, but you just can't beat walking around. I mean, you got folks from Cincinnati, they're here, they're in t-shirts and shorts, they're enjoying the weather. I mean, it's, you can't beat that. No, you can't. You know, it's a great vacation. It's a great getaway. Dan Asham's watching in Winnipeg. He says, Rod, what's the weather like there? It's cold here in Winnipeg. Of course, it's 29 <laughs> Celsius. I don't know what the uh, Fahrenheit conversion is on that, but it's mid to high 80s. John Ohm in Winnipeg. David Benefield was an awesome player. I love David even before you were a rough rider. Just all of it. The way you played, the, uh, yeah. the, the, the brand. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you Where know. did the p face painting start? Oh, who? Oh, God. Uh, John from the Minnesota Vikings. Um, oh, can't remember his name for the life of me. Uh, Randall? Randall, yes. John Randall. John Randall. Uh, that, when I saw that, when I saw him doing it, and then, of course, uh, Any Given Sunday, that was another one. It was just kind of like, I like that look. You know, I just, you know, because, I mean, it's just a great look. And now you look around. Kids are, all the guys are painted. Yep. They're all painted up and everything. So, for me, for me it, was, it was just that taking it to the next level. I need to look at your uh, Wikipedia Theater. here for a second. BC 97 to 01. So you would have played in Lou's last game. Yeah. And the reason I. Against the Scouts. Why do you, right. I was there. This is why, <laughs> why I say that. Because uh, I was trying to remember if BC Place had a big screen 
then. We had kind of had something going on. Yeah, there. you had something going yeah. on because I remember you, when you were coming out of the, when the lions were coming out of the tunnel, the camera was on you, right? You were okay. leading them on. You, pro- you probably don't remember, but no. you had the, the paint and everything. But that night, the lights went out. Do you remember with three minutes to go in the game? That was, if it's the game, I'm, uh, yeah, because I remember we wanted to get Lou to score. I, so he came in at quarterback for a, which was just, that was horrific because he was supposed to try to jump in. He got about a one inch vert. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. I was like, you're about to get killed out here. Canadian man. kicker. Oh my God. It was, it was, that was a, that was a, that was a crazy It was night. a close game though. It was. Yeah. I think if I'm not mistaken, uh, didn't Jeremy score a touchdown? O'Day. Night? O'Day. Didn't um, he score a touchdown? We'd on have like to a ask tackle? him. I, I, I don't remember. But... I think it was a tackle eligible. I think he may have scored a touchdown. Well, you guys were up late, and the riders were coming back, and with about two to three minutes left, the lights go out. Like, there's a power outage. and we're, I've, Again, I have an issue with the way they do things at BC Place. I feel that they put crowd noise in there, blah, 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 and they're like, no, we're, this is legit. This is a legit power outage. And then, boom, they put a mural up, like a bat signal. Thank you, Lou, on the roof. Uh, they planned it. And we lost. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's, it's okay. A, it's one, there's, there's certain things I just cannot stand. And it's like big games and losing at home are just that to me, that's I get just it. the end of it. Don, our Navy friend, says, David, what made you love the CFL and keep your hands in Canadian football? You, you know, as beautiful as California is, I love coming back and forth. I mean, I really do. But I just got into, I got into Vancouver, then I started seeing the rest of, well, I got into the rest of the country first, and then Vancouver, that, which is home now. And it was just the people. People were so cool. And I enjoyed, I enjoyed just being there with all these great folks, even though coming back here is just like, you just fall into it. It's like, oh, I'm back home. But right. just being there with football, and then the kids I've worked with over the years, I mean, there are so many kids that I've coached that bump into me now, I have no clue who they are. Because I left them, like this one kid, uh, he was, one, he was a, a cornerback from one of my seven-on-seven teams, about a buck 12. Literally, he, he weighed about as much as a Air Force, my Air Force Ones from 92. And now I'm walking into a grocery store, and there's this guy, police officer, big buff-looking guy, and he's like, Coach. And I'm looking, and I'm like, oh. And he's like, do you remember me? Um, I played for you. I go seven on seven. And he's like, yeah. I go, look, you've gotten big now. And he's just like, he's like, well, yeah, I've got, you know, and I mean, sometimes I've even, I've even met guys in an elevator. There's this one kid. I was at a practice one day for Vancouver College. Literally, Rod, he's with his wife, baby. And I was there for one day. But I just remember he had the best get off and stance from a defensive end that I'd ever seen. Natural. Natural. Yeah, just just amazing stance, amazing get off. And I'm like, and he's like, yeah. And I'm like, look at him because I can't put it all together because it's been so many years. And then he said, and then I'm like, he's like, you came to practice with us. And I said, and I'm like running his face and trying to dig it up. And, and I go, were you the kid with the great stance? And, and, and he started to beam and smile. And it was like, and his wife even noticed it was like, it was weird, but it's like you just meet some of these kids. That's, That's what amazing. makes you special, that you would remember that. From the viewers, if you don't mind, yeah. uh, Wayne in Victoria, B.C. is watching. He says, David Benefield has a great sense of humor and doesn't take himself too seriously. Good to see you again, Dave, on the RP Show. John in Winnipeg. David makes everyone smile. Great guy. That's why I think that we connected. Namaste, Dave. The light in me recognizes the light in you. That's what I think it is. Uh, the, the Winnipeg thing, by the way, as I go uh, through, you got something to say? No, nothing. I know it's Winnipeg and Saskatchewan. <laughs> I know, right? That's ironic. But Three okay. years with the Ottawa Rough Riders. Yeah. 95 of the BC Lions, 96 San Francisco 49ers, back to BC, 97 to 01. Winnipeg for just two years and Saskatchewan for, for just two years, but it seems like those were very impactful years in both places, or at least I felt like they were. Yeah, no, I, I went back to Winnipeg because Coach Ritchie was there. And, you know, always a fan of the blue and gold. 
from the time I think I was in like elementary school, our school colors were blue and gold. Right. That's how we start you here. You know, you start to fall in love with your school colors and you can't wait to wear your first fifth grade, you know, basketball jersey or something like that. And you just fall in love with it. So, you know, when Winnipeg was there, it was like we had Mike Sellers, we had Milt, we had Kahari Kahari quarterback. Yeah. You know, we had everybody there that you could possibly want. It was Doug Brown, you know, Brian Clark. I mean, we had a click. It was amazing. Lamar. And then we just all gelled. My roommate, especially Tom Europe, we all gelled. And if we, that, that was one of those teams where it's like, okay, we needed to be at least in one Grey Cup together. Like, at least. Because we were just, we had so much talent on the team. And just, you know, and then at the end of it, you know, it's a game of attrition. You know, I think Milk got hurt. Um, Milk got hurt. Who else got, we had a few guys get hurt right before Trying the game. Trying to think. Um, Charlie Roberts got hurt. So we were, we were really we Paul really Apolise is your offensive coordinator. He sure was. And the only reason I bring that up is Banjo Bulls. Was the Banjo Bowl even a thing yet at that time? Oh yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. Um, he, you guys just feeding Sellers the ball on eleven consecutive plays in a drive, As and the we Riders have. couldn't. <laughs> As we Riders have. couldn't stop him. Two sixty five. Five guys hanging off. He's two sixty five and six four. He's a beast. Yeah, Why he was not? Some. Yeah. Why not? And and our O line. I mean, I think I think our O line was pretty stacked too. So why not just beat them up? Abu Meshrik. Yeah. Um, we, uh, Sawatsky. Sawatsky. Van Conant seems to come to mind. Oh, Dave Mudge. Dave Mudge. That's the name. I was and Dave Mudge. Uh, Mo. Mo. I think Mo Albanibe was yep. there. I think Mo was there. So yeah, we BYU had guys. product. Yeah, we had guys. So. so were you? It's funny you say. Like, shocking. You wouldn't have won a Grey Cup with that crew. So now that the Bombers are back-to-back, champ, yeah. how happy are you for them? You know what? I've, I've got a, he was a, I met him as a customer, uh, Marcel, of, uh, of GML Mechanical in, in Vancouver. Um, and he was, I mean, just, he knew I was a Bomber. He knew I was a Lion. And I remember giving him a jersey, you know, one of our Winnipeg jerseys. Brad, thank you. Brad Body hooked me up. Thank you. And, uh, and it was just one of those things where you just go, just to see the guy going back to Winnipeg games, just to go, because he's a season ticket holder, yeah. you just see the love. He's wearing so, your jersey. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, that's really cool. I mean, for him to fly across cross country, to go to the games and everything, that's, that's just so cool. That's the sort of love you need uh, for the league. And in, so in, in Saskatchewan, no 405, who did I have on? Fell well last week. <laughs> oh, well. And we were Such talking about guy. the West Final in BC with McCallum missing the field goal uh, in overtime. And speaking of teams that should have won a Grey Cup yes. or gone to a Grey Cup and didn't. But the one thing I remember was in Saskatchewan. So Henry would have gone to the Calgary Stampeders. You're playing against him with the Rough Riders. And do you remember the rough in the passer penalty you got? You tapped his helmet after the play, and they threw the flag. No, I don't. Yeah, it was it was in a game, and we're like, what? Roughing the pass, or they just changed the rules to uh, tweak it. But like, you literally couldn't even breathe on the quarterback. But those were some good teams in Saskatchewan too that never won. No, no and and Saskatchewan was such a that was Danny Barrett and, and Roy Shivert. So they brought me in, and again, the group of guys, different group of guys, because I consider them all kids. They're all like little kids. Yeah. Hunt, you know, Hans, Guy Schultz and all those guys, Nate Davis. All Hall of Famers. They're, they're like, like little kids to me. And I'm like, hey, what are you guys doing? You know, and it was, it, but it was the vibe of the city and the fans. I walked into an art, an art, an, an art, show, uh, not an art show, a craft house, one of the art supply stores yep. downtown. I rode up there on my bike and, uh, and went in there. And this lady, and I'm not in any gear whatsoever, and I'm like looking around. And she's like, so what can I help you with, Mr. Benefield? And I'm like, what? I'm like, how do you? I mean, so it's just not surprised. A bizarre. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm completely away from sports. An art supply store. I mean, come on. And she just, boom, just like that. I'm like, wow. How were you with that? Did you like it or not like it? I mean, I thought it was cool that, sh- that here I am in an artsy store. And this woman knows her football, knows her players. You know what I mean? It's like, and she wasn't like, you know, 
young hottie, you know, trying to, hey, I'm going to scoop you, you know, right? Yeah. No, no, no. It's just as like... far as she might have, but, <laughs> but, it, but it was... the reason I say that is because we had a guy here yesterday, and I don't mind him saying, Cam Judge, who's from here, Canadian oh, linebacker. Yeah. I know his dad. Big guy, big shot in the movies, huh? I know his dad, Chris Judge, and the funny thing was we're standing, we're standing at a place, a restaurant in Vancouver, and he walks up to me. He's like, so, Dave, you know. And I'm like, oh, you know, I've seen you on TV. And he's like, you know, you know, you know I was a baller. And I'm like, shut up, man. You know, I'm like, shut up, man. You know, I never I, met him. I just I heard about cool. him. Oh, he's a good-sized guy. He's like Ogopogo. Oh, he's a good-sized guy. I mean, he's like 6'2", 215, 220. Wow. And I'm like, yeah, back in high school, right? He's like, yeah, well, well I played college ball, too. So he has a legitimate football he's pedigree. A, I, think he, I think he was an Oregon guy. I had no idea. The, no, so right. Chris is legit. So his son was going to school in California and was one of the best kids. I, I believe it was he was at Oaks. I think he was at Oaks. Oaks I don't Christian. know these schools, but I know but Wayne Gretzky's kid was his quarterback. His, and Wayne Gretzky's kid was at Oaks also, yeah. along, with, uh, along with Will Smith's son. And who else, Darren? This came up yesterday with Dent. Joe Montana's Joe kid. Joe Montana's kid was there. What so, a team. So they were all there. Like, Clawson played there. And we've got Mr. Furious here. You don't mind me calling you Mr. Furious, do you? No, it's okay. <laughs> Dan Ash of Winnipeg. Great interview, Rod, with David from Todd Pinckney. I remember David calling our 1998 Canadian Bowl in Kelowna. Rams versus Sun. Were you doing color that day? I did. Uh, Barry McDonald invited me to do, do uh, color for him that first time. First You're time. just a kid. You're in the middle of your oh, career. I had no idea. Luckily, you know, Barry was there. And, did all the stick handling and just occasionally let me get in. Did I, did I drop a hockey reference? Barry. Yeah, you did. That's oh, all right. I've been up there a while The Canadian Bay show. Uh, Ryan H. says, so great seeing David on TV again. It's amazing. I could listen to the two of you all day. Well, who knows? Maybe one day you will. I could do it all day with Dave. But I, obviously I'm a fan of yours. I love watching you play, but the, <laughs> but the CFL and CBC was, was so much fun. Tell me some of those stories, if you don't mind. Because yeah. you took that as seriously as your playing career. That was the sense I got. Yeah, you know what? And I just wanted coaching. I wanted to hear, like you're used to in football, you get the coach on Monday, red dot goes on you, you get your grade sheets, and you're like, okay. And then we go over it, and everyone, all your peers are looking in the room when your coach, you know, praises you and lets you know that's not up to snuff. I've heard know? CBC does do that, that they're very strict on that. I think, you know, I think I, I, at that time, maybe, you know, we didn't have it. It was just, oh. I mean, Elliot was sitting there and, Friedman. you know, and, yeah, Elliot and, and, uh, and Frears and who's, it's funny, I coach his son in Vancouver now. I've coached them both. And, uh, you know, and being there with Gahari and Sean Millington, it was we could have, we definitely needed to have more cohesion and be able to break down film together because you just see, like watching the guys down here, there's so much more prep that's involved. There's so much more film work that's involved. So you are free to run and show your personality and what you know, and that can, you convey that message to the audience. I think that's, that's one of the, the many differences that we have between NFL and CFL, just just the production meetings. These guys are, are in meetings like through the week. I mean, there are people gathering information and they're making their own calls and they're looking at film. And that way you can just see when they're talking, it's, it's about as natural as it can be. And they're not afraid of personality either. I think personality sells the game. We were just saying that. Darren and I look at Randy Moss and what he's overcome personally wow to be a stud on espn i know i was with chris carter last night watch your toes i'm gonna drop some names here who else were we talking about guys that have overcome who rg3 never had off field issues though like these guys yeah but they got personality you're right rg3's made a carved a great career and it's interesting you said in the break how you've kind of backed off on Facebook about slamming the CFL on the way things are. And I, and I get it because people don't want to hear it. But they seem to be going one way and the NFL is going another. And just people have said great cups are better than Super Bowl because you can reach out and touch the personalities. And that's all true. 
But have you followed what I've been doing all week? Same thing. And in some cases, if you want to pay $500 to go to a party like I did last night, you can spend all night with Chris Carter. You, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But the Canadians don't want to spend the money. It's, it's eye-opening when you start to see the differences. You know, you talk about that. You, you drop 500 here, you can see these people. I went, the last Super Bowl party I was at was at Prince's uh, uh, Club I was up in downtown L.A. It was amazing. It was amazing. I, I got right in uh, with my CFL card and... Uh, and, Pro player and, card type thing. Yeah, and 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 these 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 girls were like, "Where do you play, baby? Where do you play?" And I'm like, uh, "I play up north." They're like, "Oh, Green Bay, a little bit further." And they kept telling, "No, you don't. Who do you play for?" And it was just, it was, but it was comedy. And then just seeing the guys and and this, there wasn't anything less than an eight there. I hate to say that, but you know, it's the, all the, good. The, it was just, I mean, it was a, an amazing party. It was a great party. And actors, you know, football personalities, basketball, you name it. They were all there having a great time. Well, that's kind of what I had last night, minus Prince. Yeah. But it was still cool. Yeah. This yeah. was uh, Ron Jaworski and Mike Ditka. This was cigars and scotch. Okay. Old school NFL. Okay. Which is cool, too. Yeah. Oh, no. Don't, don't get me wrong. That, there are some characters there. You yeah. got a cigar out. You, you're a character for sure. Uh, I'm just checking uh, what they say here. Oh, they do want to talk about the game. Chad Isaac on Twitter says, 91 pressures on Joe Burrow over his last six games. Despite that, the Bengals are miraculously 6-0. and What, in playoff games? Will Sunday be any different against this Rams front? You want to get into it? You know, Anoki Brechterfield, former Winnipeg Blue Bombers, created Aaron Donaldson. When he was, when they were Come on. when they were back, at, yeah, Anoki Anoki Breckfield is probably one of the pre, uh, premier D line coaches in the NCAA, and Aaron was one of his guys. I think they were pit together, and it's just when you have, I, I think when you have a guy that can rush in the one one t- as a one tech or a three tech inside, and you can put him out on the edge, and he can do just as much damage off the edge. That's a special player. Like I think. Justin Tuck was another guy that was an edge rusher at Notre Dame. And then when he went to go play for the Giants, they moved him into three tech. And just a lot of guys can't move inside, play three tech, but he could. And then they could put him back out on the edge. That's the sort of special D lineman that you have, you know? And then, and then of, and of course, you got Vaughn Miller out there. Ooh, Hall of was, Famer. Yeah. I mean, just the stuff that he does, it reminds me of the guys that we had in the CFL. You're, your Alfred Payton's, your um, Joe Mumford's, guys like that could dance. Although Alfred Payton had amazing hand moves, Rod, you should see. If we would have had slow mo cameras on his handwork, Alfred Payton was a god. I mean, just, wax a Hall of Famer. Oh, You're talking about all Hall of Famers oh, here. This his handwork was just amazing. And then Joe, I remember when they had Joe as a backer. He was playing to play Will Backer. And you could tell Joe wasn't a backer, but he could pass rush. In Hamilton? Yeah. yeah. I remember when he had, they had him in, he was back there playing like, looked like a will backer. And it was just like, nah. But when he started playing in, game over. I mean, even think about the guys we've had, like Shelton Quarles. They had yeah. him as a backer with Richie. He went on, you know, Super Bowl. He was part of the Tampa Bay Super Bowl team, one of the best defenses ever in the Super Bowl. Uh, and then I think it was Freeman. Freeman, who went on, from, Jarrell Freeman, Jarrell Freeman, who went on from, he was a like almost like a backer rusher guy, you know, with Saskatchewan in those days, and then he goes down the NFL. He's one of the fastest. Very good middle, there too. Oh, he's amazing middle backer playing defense, not special all over, teams. Flies all over the place. Defense, yeah. but like Sam McGlovin yeah. with the Dolphins. If you're following it now, he was with the yeah. Riders for three years, and he's doing great. So, it is a tremendous uh, breeding ground for pro players and a great place to go play. But back to the game for a second. Yes. I do think the Rams are just too good, and I think they're going to win by double digits. That's my take. It hasn't changed all week. The pressure is on the Rams to come Ooh. out there and, and do it at home. I mean, they've got all the pressure. Cincinnati's got no pressure. They're a bunch of kids Not that were horrible to be last year. You know, they weren't that great. And, and now, look at Joe Burrows is out there doing, he's, he's moving. You know, so he's not the quarterback. What you want to do, I'm sorry, I'm like all over the place because get excited it's thinking okay. about it. But when you think about how do you get him off his spot, 
you're going to have to make him move around and, and make those make those throws like the Allens, like the Mahomes. If he's not comfortable moving around, throwing, making those difficult throws that those guys make it look so easy, then it's going to be a long game for them. It really will be because if you're, you've got, he's got the receivers, but is he able to make the, the movement throws with that, with that pocket? He's got collapsing? the back too. And in the back. Yeah. In the back, he's what? Watching the back, watching their, their run game. I was when they were playing the Chiefs. It's like okay, we need to stop here, and he gets seven yards. We need to stop here for three. He gets fifteen yards, and so it just always puts your defense behind when you need it three or four. He's ten, you know, and it's back and forth like that. And he's he's one of those backs that just makes something happen when you think okay, they got him. Oh no, here's an extra couple of yards. You know, kind of like you know, I don't want to. Mike Pringle was a guy, you tackle him, and he falls forward for three yards. It's like, Mike, Mike's only about 5'8". Mike's 5'8". Yeah, you're getting an extra three. Going into the Cal State Fullerton Hall of Fame this weekend is Mike Pringle, and Damon Allen is here no to way. induct him. DA was on with us yesterday. <laughs> no way. That's Mike Pringle. <laughs> what a weekend to have that, you, sorry. Mike Pringle and I were sitting at Glendale College. We're sitting at Glendale College on the steps. With his buddies, all we all were at Glendale, and uh, Mike's there, and I think he had just got back from uh, Washington State, you know, so he transferred to Fullerton, and we're sitting there, and Mike is the same guy he was then as he was in the CFL, barely says two words except to people that he's super close with, and and we're just sitting there, and it's just funny, it's just like you have these flashbacks, dude. Remember we at Glendale? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And James Edition was playing in the background, like literally on campus. They were playing on our campus, Rod. Okay. Of course. <laughs> on a Tuesday. LA thing. It was a Tuesday, and they're like this, you know, new band trying to get some time. James and Edition. We're, and we're wow. sitting there. We're sitting there on the steps, just hanging out, talking, Did, you know, oh, where do you want to go? I want to go Division One. I, I want to go, you know, guys are talking about where they want to go after junior college. And, and it's just like the dream, you know, it's. It's just the whole thing is just the dream. That's unbelievable. Yeah. So it was before they were Jane's Addiction. They were just some area band. Yeah. Much like, much like when we were in high school, we'd go see uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers opening for Fishbone. You know, right. it's like, who are those guys? Oh, they're pretty cool. You know, they're opening it's, for Fishbone. It's right an up. interesting town. Yeah. I love visiting. I have no desire to live here. The moose over here is a little different. He's very West Coast. Um, but it's great. Oh, it's, it's great. There are some spots you would totally dig. Oh, there, I dig there it all. Lot, there are a lot of spots you it's would totally pace, dig. It's the pace, Dave. It's too much for me. It's overwhelming. Go, 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 go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and, when you get up and it's 75 degrees, what else are you going to do? What do you do? Stay home? Yeah. yeah you can't exactly. stay in the house. Yeah, no, for sure. So, what's your Super Bowl weekend going to look like? <laughs> we're heading down to San Clemente, my son and I. So, we're going to be down there. Then I'm not sure where we're going to see Super Bowl yet, but we're just, it's all about him this weekend. So we're going to see how it goes. And then, uh, and then hopefully we can catch the game some more. Really appreciate you coming down and making it a priority, man. You are something. Hall of Fame player and person. I appreciate you. You got to vote for me there. We got we to gotta figure out how to slide our way into the Hall of Fame. I, I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. You got the, you got the resume. Oh, man. You got Rams to win. I'm just putting I, this here. I do. I have Rams to win and a close one. Okay. The line's four. Ooh. I, Are they I, cover? I'm, Rams cover? Four? I'm, I'm not a gambler and don't even follow that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to say a, a close, a close one. one. Field goal. Four points is close. Yeah, exactly. All right, Dave. Enjoy the weekend. Appreciate you. Hey, thanks, Rod. I really appreciate it. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the RP Show on YouTube. And don't forget, we're live daily on YouTube from noon to 2 Eastern. If you like what you see... Hit subscribe, and if you like the program, check around for other segments of The Rod Peterson Show here on YouTube.